Greetings, 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 my brothers and sisters. It's Brother Gene. It's uh, 9.05. I'm running a little late. I apologize for that. But um, I pray all has been well with you and your, your family this past week. I pray that uh, you've been trusting God, as, that he's been leading you and guiding you and directing you. I pray that all is well. I had a little, uh, since we spoke last, had a little procedure and all went well. It was, uh, it all went well. I thank God for that. And uh, I thank God for you. I thank God today was a beautiful day. You know, every day was beautiful. Today was exceptionally beautiful. The sun, you know, I've learned, I've learned life is teach me how to appreciate things. So, I mean, even the little things sometimes that we take for granted, I try not to take it for granted. I try to be mindful of it. And even still, sometimes I neglect to be mindful of some things that probably should be. But I thank God for each and every one of you. And I pray that this week has been a blessed week uh, for you uh, as it start out. And I pray that you continue to move by faith. You know, the Bible said, the just shall live by faith. And sometimes the things that we're confronted with, it's not, well, it's not sometimes, but the, because we're in the kingdom. And I'm speaking to those that are in the kingdom. Uh, uh, those that are in the kingdom, because we're in the kingdom, we are, with things that come upon us, it's not meant to destroy us, but it's meant to make us better. So, with that being said, uh, it's a little warm. With that being said, you know, we want to make sure that we be mindful of that in every way, because we don't want to take nothing for granted. We won't take nothing for granted. And we have to know that all things work together for, for the good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. We don't want to take nothing for granted. We know that there's a process. And if we trust God, we have to trust his process. And that means that as we go through this life and some of the things that we're confronted with, we, we have no say in it, in the matter. But if we trust God, then we have to trust his process. And if we trust this process and as we lean into his will, meaning that we don't pull ourselves back, but we trust this process. And when we lean into his will, we know that it's going to work out for our good. So we trust in the outcome, even though we don't understand it, because sometimes we don't understand what's going on right then. But we have to trust him because we can't trust him with our eyes, because what we see and what he say is sometimes uh, could not be the way we think it should be because our, we obscure things with our own perception but then we have to trust his process so when we look into his word and, and he says something or he speak a word into your life and you trying to figure out how to do it and how to help him he don't need your help he needs you to trust him he needs you to be obedient to his will he needs you to submit yourself to the, to the, to the unction of his spirit and as we do that, then we'll find ourselves moving in the direction that he wants us to, to go. Um, I had a couple of incidents this week that was just, to me, I like when God do things like that because I have no control. I don't know what's going on until after it didn't happen. So I had, um, um, had to take a part back, a core charge for a starter, my wife's car. They've been riding around with in the car for a couple of weeks. And I've been meaning to take it back. And all of a sudden, I get this unction to go to a certain auto parts store, take it back. So when I took it back, when I took it back, when I gave her my phone number and stuff, it should have just, she should have asked for my card and swiped it and put the money back on the card. It took that woman uh, maybe 10 minutes or so, maybe longer than, she couldn't, it just wasn't nothing working right. And normally, you'd be a little hostile, but I'm learning that when stuff like that happens, we need to be paying attention because God is working something out. Uh, so then a, 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 a elderly woman comes in and she asks him to check the pressure. I mean, check the uh, fluids to a vehicle. And so the lady told her that they don't do that. So I kept looking back at her and was hoping that man, man, if I if when he get when they get me straight, I go do it. So I I told the lady. I said, well, if you, you know, when they finished me, I said, ma'am, I said, do you want me to check it? She said, would you please? So I went out there to do it, and lo and behold, she, she needed oil. 
she asked for to check her what is it the trans fluid but i told her it was sealed you couldn't check it and so i checked the oil i said well you, you there's no oil on this dipstick so she, we, she got oil and put in there and she had thanked because she said she had felt led to go do it right then and she later mentioned that her her, her uh, son was a pastor and uh, we sat there and talked for a while but i said that to say that it was it, even the little things the little things god put us in places so that he could be glorified because uh i knew that i was there just for that purpose and we we talked a little bit about the lord um but i was there for that purpose and i had another incident earlier uh well it was a later last week something similar but i say that to say this we need to be looking for opportunities to be used by god to to to, to allow his glory to be manifested in this in this in this world he if we're children of lights he had he had, he had uh he had um gave us the example of a light being on a hill meaning that it's not put under a bush it's not up under a bed it's not put in an obscure place but it's put to illuminate and what the light that we are to this world we're to illuminate the truth of his kingdom because when we're born into his kingdom the kingdom of light then we are to take that light that has been imputed into us and we're to allow that light to be manifest through us so that we can be lights to the world drawing men to the source of the light that we possess so that's our process that i mean that's the process so we have to allow this light that we have to shine so it, it, and god uses it how he see fit but we need to avail ourselves to him so that as we go forward that we'll be able to be used by him because we talk about the kingdom of light but we are supposed to be an uh uh uh, an example of the kingdom one scripture referred to as ambassadors an ambassador represent their kingdom so when you see them you see the very personification of their kingdom so we represent the kingdom of light we supposed to be ambassadors to the kingdom of god we're the kingdom ambassadors that means that we supposed to be displaying the love of god in every attribute of our life we we, we should be in the forefront showing god's love in the marketplace or when we do business wherever we go now the bible said business be men but we could be men kingdom men that do business in a godly manner that will glorify him because if we come to the table and we do right even though it seems like we're losing we cannot lose because he's going to honor it that doesn't mean that we do bad business practices because he'll teach us to be prudent in business, how to be good business. But we don't do things where we take advantage of people. We're fair. Because we, we, if it's not fair to them it's, and just fair to us, it's not fair. And we being citizens of the kingdom, this is how we should be thinking. So this is an example of a kingdom mindset. We looking at um, all of these spiritual attributes. But this thing has to be put in a practical application. In order for the world to see it, it brings out spiritual outcomes. But the thing is, is that we should take these practical applications and be using them in our day-to-day -day lives. This is how they see the kingdom. When you be a neighbor, a good neighbor to your neighbor, and they're wondering what's your angle, and you don't have one. When you're just helping somebody because God put it on your heart to do it, and you 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 just doing whatever you could do to help them. Not that you're looking for it to be beneficial to you in any way. You're just trying to be obedient to what's inside of you. Because you don't know what's God doing on the other end. But you have to do what you're supposed to do. And whether they do right by you or not, that's between them and God. But you have to do what you're supposed to because we represent a kingdom. And if we represent our Lord, when he tell us to stay our hand, we have to stay our hand. He tell us to hold our peace. We have to hold our peace. So the thing is, is that we have to be unctioned by the Spirit of God, which which uh, goes and causes us to <clears throat> uh, tells us how to conduct ourselves in these day to day activities uh, in every situation, so that we we're being governed by His Spirit, we're being led by His Spirit. This is what makes us peculiar, so that we go day to day with this mindset. 
Lord, lead me and guide me and direct me. You know what? I forgot to pray. Praise God. I just started talking. But let's start with a word of prayer. Then we'll go on and continue what I was saying. Excuse me. Gracious Father God, we thank and praise you for your goodness and your great mercy. We pray that you lead God and direct us. Help us, oh God, to be all that you created us to be. That we might fashion ourselves after the image of your son, Jesus. Lord God, that we, Lord, might be brought to the, conform, the, the exact image of him, Lord God, that as I desire. As Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. That we might be followers of Christ to exemplify him in every aspect of our life. Father God, we ask that you bless that's it. If there's any sick in our midst under the sound of our voice, right now we send the power of your word and we command that all sickness lead their body in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we're thanking you right now for touching those, Lord God, who backs are aching, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, the one that's rubbing their right ankle, Lord, we thank you right now for healing them. Father God, we ask that you bless them by your power and your might, Lord God. We know there's nothing too hard for you. Lord God, even my friend Gina, Lord, we thank you for touching her body, Lord God, and giving her a speedily recover in the name of Jesus. Lord, we know that there's nothing too hard for you. And we thank you even now, Lord God, for touching her body. Lord God, that she'll give a testimony of your divine favor, Lord God. And we're just so grateful for, for this opportunity once again to come before uh, you as we come together, you said we're two or three gathered together in your name. Uh, you are, there are you in the midst. And we thank you for abiding in the midst of us, Lord God, as we edify you and you open up our understanding. Illuminate us, Lord God, with your truth that we might walk in it, Lord God. Oh, God, that we'll be careful to walk in and observe it in every aspect of our life. And we just want to thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So we thank and praise, praise God for uh, each and every one of you. And we pray. We pray that, uh, that you know, God uh, uh, just have his way in our, our heart. But as we go forward and we exemplify, we show ourselves as sons uh, that, we, that we understand this process. And in order for us to understand what it is or how it is to become a son, and you hear me talk about this a lot. But in order to build any any building of, of, of any magnitude, you have to have a good foundation. So it takes time to establish a foundation. But once the foundation is laid, then you can begin to build rapidly because once the foundation is laid, then it'll be able to handle whatever is put on it. But if you take the foundation and it has not settled, it has not been cemented in, it has not been a, a, a pack where there's, there's, there's a moisture and resistance or, or air in, in it, in the crevice of it, and you begin to build on it, then what happens is, as it began to settle, because it wasn't it wasn't done properly, it caused the structure that was built on it to be become distorted. So why am I saying this? I'm saying this because you hear me say things in a repetitious way, uh, a repeti repetitiously, but the reason I do that is because in order for us to be able to build the uh on the um to build uh and establish ourselves in a way that God would have us to be to be established in him we need to make sure that our foundation is settled because the foundation is what carries the weight of that which is built on so our foundation being Christ we need to solidify our understanding on what he has done for us and how he has made it possible for us to walk in him and it's truth. This is important. This is crucially important. So this is why you hear me make mention of this, because in order for us to go where he wants us to go, we need to understand what he's done for us. And because he's done this thing, these things for us, he made it possible for us to be able to maximize that potential that he has put inside of us. He has predestined a will for mankind. Now, Jesus came to put things in order so that we that was carried off course because of Adam, uh, the fall, uh, because of Adam's disobedience, um, he was able to, through the lineage of time, to impute his seed in a woman, that seed being the seed of his word in her, and brought forth a son, his only son, Jesus, Yeshua, Hamashiach, the Christ, he had brought him forth so that his blood, as he, as he 
grew up and became a man of age that he grew up and because he was not in the lineage of man becoming from a seed of a man he was able to walk on this in this flesh and not allow himself to succumb to the will of this flesh and overcame the flesh and now through his blood his shed blood he not only was our example but he was our atoning sacrifice that was acceptable to the father that we could be through his blood redeemed back to the father so this is very important for us to understand this. So once we redeem back into the Father, made it possible through him that we could be, become sons. Because that was the intent in the beginning. So now that we become sons, we have to be born into this kingdom. Now we accept him as our Lord and Savior. We have to do what he said do. He said that except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So we have to, that's in John uh, three. So you read that ch the, the chapter in its entirety, and and he explained it. He was talking to Nicodemus. So we have to be born in the water and the spirit. It's necessary. You'll see a foreshadow in the Old Testament. I've mentioned it time and time again. But in the Old Testament, when Israel was delivered out of Egypt and Moses was taking them to the promise, before they could enter the promise, all of Israel had to pass through the Red Sea. All of Israel, that cloud, that spirit that led them, all of them was led by the same spirit. All of them had to cross that water. All of them. It was no second way, no other way. It was just that way. So what are you saying, Brother Gene? How does this apply to us? Well, Jesus said that except we be born of the water and the spirit, they had to cross into the water, we have to be immersed into the water. We'd be buried into his, his burial, and we rise in the newness of life. So we'd be in, coming down, being a descendant of Adam, rising up, being a recipient, or being imputed into the seed of Jesus. Okay, Then we receive his spirit in us. Now we have power to not allow the flesh to dictate the outcome of this life that we have to live on this planet. That is what happened to Eve. She has succumbed to the lust of the desires that was in his flesh. The lust of the eye, the pride of life, and the lust of the flesh. And when we have his spirit, and he said, those, he said, we, if we, he said, God's never, as, 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 and I'm paraphrasing, God's never tempted any man, but every man is tempted when he's drawn away and enticed after his, after the lust in his own flesh. So when we allow ourselves to be led by our flesh the outcome is sin every time every time so he imputed his spirit in the lineage of man so now that his spirit abides in us and we can be led by it so once we're led by his spirit praise god now we, we said when we walk after the spirit he said against that there is no law because we walk after this that's love peace and joy in the holy ghost he said against such there's no law. So this in this dispensation of grace, now what the law did is expose the heart of man. It showed us our wickedness. So when somebody next time they tell you, God know your heart, that is why he sent his son. Because our heart is deceitfully wicked. So when you say you God know your heart, you think it's a good thing. But it was because he knew our heart that he had sent his son so that we could be um be redeemed by his son. And we can have a heart transplant because our heart ain't right. Not in his sight. So that that's why if he know your heart and you know your heart, then you need to get the heart of Jesus. And you do that by succumbing or submitting to his will, sit and submitting to his word and allow yourself to be led by him. And when you do that, then then now you, you don't have to know your heart. You begin to learn the heart of the Messiah. You begin to learn the heart of Christ. And allow that heart to take root in your heart, to your heart will become like his heart. And then when God look at you, he don't see you, but he see Christ being manifest, being brought forth out of you. That's that's the difference. So the reason I go through all of this and say all of that, because it's, cru it's crucial for us to understand that. Most people go through, and I use that term, Christendom, they, they go through Christendom 
and they don't understand a lot of the process that take place. Some of them are traditions of men. Some of them has been mandated in God's word. But those things that I'm referring to now is that which God has spoken his word. I don't deal with tradition. Because you can't show me in there what tradition has been helpful. Scripture said the tradition of men has really made the power of God, God of none effect. So if we think that our traditions is necessary, that's what happened when the um, the, the Pharisaical priesthood and they came before Jesus. They were they was talking to him about the laws that they established, telling him that you don't know who we are. We sit at the seat of Moses. People don't know what that means. You know what that means? They got a seat of Moses where they sit at that seat and they um, enact or speak out laws to supersede God's laws. That shows man's heart. And we see some of that today. God said one thing, and then a couple guys get together who call themselves bishops or apostles, and then they say something contrary to what God has said. And because who they establish themselves to be, uh, then they feel that that is okay because God know them, and you know they, you know they his boy, and they apostles, and they bishops, and or they prophets. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. God is God. He is sovereign. Now, in our country, you can go and say stuff to the governors and the the president and the senators and all that. But in the monarchy, which this kingdom is, when the king speak, it is so. Either you abide or you suffer consequences. So I say that with a smile, but that's the truth. Because we thinking that we could do things and cook and turn. It don't work like that. It ain't. This ain't that kind of party. God is God and he's sovereign. He is the same and he changed not. What are you saying? His sovereign character. He cannot change because he is who he is. And that's who he is. The Bible says he's the same and he changed not. If he said it is so, he gave us examples in the scriptures about the Medes and the Persians. When a Mede and a Persian king said something, they couldn't take it back. God, when he says what he says, he means what he says. So we have to keep that in mind. I said all of that to say that we can't change what he said. If he don't change it, it's not changed. So we can't add to it and we can't take away from it. So I'm saying all that to say that we need to change the paradigm of our thinking and bring ourselves into conformity of his will. His will has been mandated in his word. So we say that we love him. And if we love him, the scriptures say, Jesus said, if you love me, then you'll do what I say. So if we love him, it's going to be demonstrated. See, love is an action word. You have to show it. And if we, we, we can't say we love God and we do what we want to do, because we love him, we're going to do what he say. But if we say that we love him and we do what we want to do, then that means that our love for him is void. Because if we love him, he said you will do what I say. He said you will keep his commandment. He said that you will love your brother as yourself. So we, we, we got to change that thing. That We have to get it right. So if we get the fundamental things right and we begin to build on that, then we'll begin to get momentum and we'll begin to see that things begin to happen um, in a very uh, 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 magnificent way in our lifestyle because he'll begin to show himself mighty because we have submitted to his will and we allow ourselves to be led by him. He waiting on us, people, and it's time for us to not allow ourselves to hide behind these religious cults, uh, not cults, cultures. That's the word I'm trying to say. So I don't want nobody to think I'm calling they, whatever they into a cult. I'm not saying that. But I meant to say religion, religious cultures. We have to be submitted to his will. We need to be advocates of truth. As we go forward as sons, those that are born into his kingdom, we're supposed to be advocate of truth. What am I saying? What I'm saying is that the truth of his word supersedes my friendship. It supersedes what Paul, uh, 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 I don't want to use those scripture names, uh, Billy Bob or, or, or Bishop uh, Fork or 
Apostle Spoon, it, it supersedes that. So what am I saying? I'm saying that if somebody says something contradictory to God's word, we can't sit and align ourselves with it because they they who they say they are. Our allegiance has to be to God first. I'll say it again. I'm gonna say I'm sometimes people say I'm a little too excited, but that's who I am. Our allegiance has to be to God first. Praise the Lord, my sister. God bless you. Uh sister uh, Shropshire. Uh, the, the, our allegiance has to be to God first. He has empowered us. We talk about this Holy Ghost power. We don't understand the magnitude of it. He gave us power to make a difference. When you take a light and you put it in a dark room and you cut the light off, the, the darkness consumes the room. But the, mom, the moment that light is illuminated, it dispels darkness. So what are you saying, Brother Gene? This is what I'm saying, what the Word is telling us, is that He has made us to be agents of change. But the change have to be manifest on the inside of us. Then it's, a, it's generated in us, and then it begins to illuminate outside of us, and it begins to affect the environment around us. When you look at what Jesus did everywhere he went, it was, it was, it, he made a difference. His mere presence. So what am I saying? He said that we're supposed to be like him. We have to change the paradigm, I think, and we need to understand who God has made us to become in him. What does it mean to be a son? He has endowed us with power to go forth and proclamate his truth in this world. Not just preaching to them, telling them they're going to die and go to hell, but loving on them and let them know that the love of God, the, the, the love that God has for us is so great so he don't want you to die, but he made it possible for you to live. And he gave his son. He didn't even hold him back. He gave his son so that you could be made a son, so that you could be reconciled, so that you can have fellowship and relationship with him. They need to hear it like that, as opposed to just telling them they're going to go to hell. Tell them about all the opportunities and possibilities that God has empowered, made it possible for them to be redeemed, uh, uh, to bring them back into fellowship with him. A lot of times we just look at it from that one perspective. Oh, praise him, praise him. <laughs> Sister Daisy, praise the Lord. So, that's my, oh my. So that that's it's so important for us. It's so important for us to understand that. We need to understand, excuse me, I had to drink me some water. But we need to understand what he's empowered us for. He has empowered us for purpose. And we can't minimize it. We have a tendency to be all of this dunamis, all of this power. We talk about it, praise God. But few of us have ever seen it manifest in our life. I remember God sent me, and I share this stuff now. I remember I tried to get some people to go with me to this brother. That he called me on a Monday evening or Tuesday evening. And he said to me that brother, he called me. I was in bed. Me and I was reading in the bed. And he said, hey, brother. And I said, talk. He said, man, they talking about cutting my leg off Thursday. So I was in a couple days. So I went and said, we're going to pray for you, bro. I said, no, no, it just bugged me so much. And so I tried to get some people to go with me. But it happened to be on a Bible class. And I'm going to show you our mindset, our mindset, our religious mindset. It happened to be on a Bible class night. I'm not indicting nobody, but I'm showing you how we think. It happened to be on a Bible class night. So the Bible class took precedent over us going to minister to a soul. Huh? Well, anyway, okay. So I couldn't get nobody to go with me. So my buddies, one of my buddies said, Gene, maybe God wants you to go by yourself. I went up there. His leg was about like that. It was black. And I remember we got up there. He was in the nursing facility. And so went in there. We sat and talked and corralled around. He even had somebody go get some food for us. And it was getting late. And I said, brother, it's getting late. I said, I'm getting tired. I said, let's. Let's do it. So he and I began to pray for his leg. So I get on my knees and start praying. I close my eyes and the Lord prompted me to open my eyes. It wasn't no long, arduous prayer. I wasn't down there two minutes. I wasn't down there, I don't think, 60 seconds. And I started to pray and God said, open your eyes. 
I opened my eyes and I'm looking at this man leg starting to shrink and I thought I was seeing things. I'm shaking my head and I'm looking, I'm shaking my head and making sure I'm seeing what I'm seeing. And he said, brother, do you see it? Do you see it? And the Lord started causing his leg to just close, shrink right in front of my face. So I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm, I'm like so excited. I'm about to, wow. And I get excited thinking about it. But anyway, I said all that to say this. God wants to use us, but we have to make ourselves available. What do I mean by that? We have to change our thinking, the paradigm of our thinking. If you cannot see yourself no more than just somebody that's sitting on the pew and that you in the choir and that you usher twice a week and that you supposed to clean up every third Saturday and that you cook on the fifth Sunday, and that's all that you see, that's all you'll be. All of that stuff is to the birds. The most important thing for you to see and understand that Jesus didn't send his son just for you to clean up you. Jesus, sent, I mean, God sent, didn't send his son just for you to clean up you. God sent his son to redeem the lost, to bring us back into fellowship with the Father so that we can carry out his purpose on this planet. He wants to manifest himself in us and through us so that we can cause men to look to him as we avail ourselves over to him. So I'm saying to each and every one of you that we have to change how we see ourselves. We need to hear what is said in this word. We need to understand what he is saying. We need to understand to what length God had went to redeem us and bring us back to him. Because this is no small task. But when you begin to see it, my prayer is that God will show you the magnitude of his love when you see it. Because as he unveiled it to you and you begin to see the magnitude of his love, you want to know more about him. You want to know more about him. You want to be closer to him. Because it's his love for us. It's his love for us. And when you think about it, before he said, let there be, he had us in his mind. So he created a place so that we can dwell in it. And that we was made in his image and after his likeness. David was talking about it in Psalms. I think in Psalms 8. What is man to die mindful of him? And the original translation reads, it's, it goes on to say, you know, considering the stars and the moons and all of this, and I'm paraphrasing, he said, um, and he said, thou has made him, a, the, the, the King James said, thou has made him a little lower than the angels. But the, the original translation reads, thou has made him a little lower than Elohim. We don't know fully who God has made us to become in him through his son. And we need to understand that. That's one of the biggest things uh, acts of deception the enemy has played on us as believers because we minimize as the bible said as a man think in his heart so is he so you can have the power to move mountains but if you can't conceive it you can't receive it but if you begin to say what he says and believe what he says then you can be you'll begin to walk in what he says it will begin to manifest in your life so don't minimize the god in you David saw God being greater than Goliath. So to him, Goliath was nothing compared to his God. It's all, and then look at the whole army of Israel. It needed to be somebody in the midst that had a paradigm shift. But in the midst of all of that, he had developed, he was developing in the field, a relationship with the king, the king of kings. He was developing a relationship with him. So it was in that relationship, it began to get personal and God began to show himself mighty in the life of David as a young man. But he unveiled himself over to him. That's what we have to do. We have to allow ourselves to be yielded over to his will. That his will will be our desire and not that of our own. We all got to have a Gethsemane experience. What are you saying, Brother Gene? This is what I'm saying. It was in the Garden of Gethsemane that Jesus had totally surrendered over to the will of God. He said, if it be so, let this cup pass. But before he left, he said, nevertheless, not his will, but thine be done. Every one of us have to get to that point in our life. 
that we're more concerned about the will of the Father than our own. Till our will is to do His will. That was Jesus' desire. And we want to be like Him. We need to read about Him. Read about Him. He ain't, it is in plain sight. So our desire should be to do the will of our Father. And sometimes we minimize things. You know, He's given us power to speak to the situations in our life. Some things we struggle with because we don't have the faith to speak to it. We have to speak. Listen. He gave us. When he made Adam until the fall, Adam had to do nothing but speak. That's all he had to do. Speak. 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 He was made in his father's image. He was made in the image of God. He was made after his likeness. And when God worked, he spoke. What am I saying? This is one of the reasons, if you read in the scriptures, that we have to give an account for every idle word that come out of our mouth. Because we're building something or we're tearing something down with our words. Scripture said that the power of life and death is in the tongue. Are we speaking life or we're speaking death? We have to give an account for what comes out of our mouth. Every idle word. It does not go to naught. Because we've been made in his image after his likeness. So we need to learn about our Father so we'll know how to say and what to say and when to say it. So with that being said, I, I just wanted to share a few things. Um, I, I, it's, it's so important for us. It's so important for us to know who we are. And, I'm, I, and, I, I, and I, I know sometimes I come off like I'm um, uh, against a lot of things, but I'm not. I'm just an advocate for truth. And a lot of times it can be misinterpreted. And a lot of times it's like that because that's what the enemy wants. You know, David was, uh, if you look at it, when, when, when they was looking for a king, when he went to, um, Samuel went to Jesse's house, his father looked for everybody and didn't even think about him. It was because of the lowliness, his position, stature, whatever the relationship between him and his father was. But it, 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 it played out even in, how he re related to the to the prophet, because he wasn't considered even considered. But God always picked the person or the people that everybody cast out, because they avail themselves over to the people. I mean, to to God, and not try to br be brought into the conformity of the people. So the, I think sometimes the best thing that happened to me that I was uh, considered somewhat of a black sheep, because a lot of times I ain't had nobody to talk to. So guess what? I needed to talk to somebody. So I started talking to God. And eventually, he started talking back. And so I thank God for that. You know, sometimes we don't understand some of the things we go through and we shun them. But we have to be mindful. I had to learn it. That all things, knowing that all things work together for the good to them that love him and are called according to his purpose. I didn't understand it, but I look back and I, I'm thankful for it. I have no animosity, none of that stuff. Because had it not been for that, I wouldn't be sitting here today. I wouldn't understand the things that he shared or revealed to me. I wouldn't understand them. And I just thank him, I thank him, I thank him. You know, because we have to be willing to want to be used by him in a way that's going to be pleasing to him. Because again, we should have a desire to seek his will in our lives and not that of our own. That should be our desire. Is to seek the will of our Father. Excuse me. So, I'm not going to be for you much longer. But before I do, um, excuse me, close out. I wanted to say what I always say. And it's uh, about Ezekiel 33. Um, it was uh, in March. I think it was March 8th or 9th. I was in bed asleep. And the Lord showed me in a dream. Ezekiel 33 and 6. As I opened my eyes to get up and go look at what that scripture meant, uh, I heard seven. So I get up and I read Ezekiel 6 and 7, and this is how it reads. And uh, <clears throat> it says here, it says, uh, But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, 
he has taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. So the thing is, is that when he said this to me, this was like a clarion call to, to pastors. And it was talking to me about pastors that has um, compromised the truth of his word to exact people out of their money. To say what people want them to say so that they'll give. So that they'll they'll give in offerings and all these other things. But they're not saying what God is telling them to say. So what has happened is this has grown immensely. And God's not pleased with it. So he told me to just say this warning to these leaders. And, and said to told me to tell them to turn their hearts back to him. And turn the hearts of his people. And say what he tell you to say. And not what you want to say. And he said if you don't. He's going to judge you in a way that the whole world will know that it's him. So it's judgment. And you know they said it begins at the house of God. It's coming. And my job is to just give the warning to those that need to make the necessary adjustments. So that they won't find themselves outside of his will. But in the center of his will. Because you can't wish that anybody be in trouble with God and you want to be his son. You want you don't want they don't want to even see what it looked like. I don't even want to know. I don't. I hope nobody. I hope everybody say do what he tell them to do. Especially me. You know. So uh, I, I, he didn't tell me. Um, <laughs> praise the Lord, my my sister. Uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. Um, he didn't tell me, he didn't tell me not, you know, he didn't give me no name. So I just said what he said. And I pray that whoever it's for, I pray that they hear it because this is the deal. We don't want to find ourselves outside of his will. We don't want to find ourselves in a place that's not pleasing to him. We don't want that. So what I'm saying is that <laughs> I would rather some people be this grunting with me. And they get over it, then God be disgruntled with me, and I miss it. So I, you know, I, I, uh -uh, I don't want that. So I'm my my thing is that I pray that you know that we say what He tell us to say. Sometimes I have stuff scripted out, and you see all my little notes, all my stuff, I have all this stuff ready, and He won't even He don't even take me on these. It'd be something totally different. He tell me to say, I'd be studying. I'd say, well, we, oh man, it's gonna be good. We talk about this. And he said, no, I don't want you to talk about that yet. Talk about this. <laughs> and so I remember when he first started prepping me in that because it used to make me uncomfortable because sometimes I never know what I'm going to say or what the Lord's going to have me to say until I sit right here. I never, I think sometimes I do. And sometimes it'll be just before. Sometimes I think it's going to go one way and he'll take me down another whole path. Oh, man, it, it, that happens like 99% of the time. So uh, 98% of the time, it's in the 90, high 90 percentiles. So I don't know, I don't, I don't I, but I do need to study. So I, I, I study and I try to meditate on this word because I don't know where he going to take me. I don't know what he want me to say, but I have to be attentive. At first, I used to be very uncomfortable, almost sweaty palms because I didn't know what he was going to tell, but he was preparing me for this because they used to always do it to me at the church and I used to get mad because I wouldn't know until the last minute and I remember I was fussing the guy one day driving home and he said to me I was on expressway going from the uh, 75 to 96 in that turn and I'm in the car by myself and I'm just complaining to him like he's sitting right next to what he was you know we we had that you know I don't know if y'all have it but y'all it's available to you so I'm sitting and he's we right there we talking and then he said to me I'll say, I'll never forget it. Just as plain as day. He said, more of me and less of you. And I shut up. Just kept driving. I said, okay, okay. More of me and less of you. So the thing is, is that we have to learn how to be sensitive to a spirit. Because we are spirit-led people. This is what makes us peculiar. We are spirit-led people. 
Israel, when it was led out of the uh, bondage out of Israel, I mean out of Egypt, Israel was led by Moses. It was, he was following the cloud by day and fire by night. That would simplify God's spirit. Wherever his spirit stopped, that's where they would set up the tabernacle, their tent there. He was leading them. That was the foreshadow of how we're supposed to be led every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. So that's a process because we have to change our mind. What I discovered, this is me talking. What I discovered, when we learn, when we pray more in tongue, what happens is it's a short circuit in the because it's something coming out of your mouth that's not coming from you, but it's coming out of you. It's coming from God's spirit. But when you yield over and allow the spirit to speak through you, it teaches you how to be more sensitive to the spirit. You know, this is this is just me. So when I, I pray and I speak in tongue, I pray in tongue, I've learned how to just allow it to flow. So it, it just like to me, it'd be like a, I'm speaking another language fluently. So and, and, and what happens is I, I'm learning more and more how to be more sensitive to his move. Do I make it right every do I miss it some? Yeah, I miss it a lot. I have in the past, but now I miss it less. You know, but my objective is to be spot on. Be just like Jesus. That's my goal. Paul said, follow me as I'm following Christ. His objective was to be like Christ. Our objective is to be like Christ in every aspect of our life. Now you can have the leaders that say to you, follow them as they follow Christ. But remember, the uh, the object is Christ, not the leader. The object is Christ. He is showing you the direction that Christ is. You are going that direction. But your focus should be on Christ. 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 I put emphasis on that. Because it's in man to be tempted to follow men in a way that's fanatical. To the point where they'll follow man and their allegiance will be to that man or that leader that they follow. Because it might be a woman. It'd be allegiant to, the, to, to them and not to God. And we have to be leaders. We need to be conscious of that. That you make sure. Because when you look at the apostles, they made, made it perfectly clear. Don't, don't be kissing my ring and trying to bow to me. He said, I'm a man just like you. Get up. You don't see that today. These guys will let you kiss their ring. And well, I didn't mean to go there. But anyway, they, they, they'll let you praise them. That's dangerous. That is dangerous. And when you create that atmosphere, it's, it, it then it becomes almost like a frenzy. Because people that aspire to be like you, they want to be praised like you. So now that they're in a position of authority, they expect it. So what you've done is create a whole atmosphere that's void of God. This is one of the reasons why the tradition of God, I mean tradition of men, makes the power of God of none effect. That's just one example. Because if we do it his way, it's conducive for growth. So once it's conducive for growth and that love is being shared abroad and there's no schism. So I don't look at no brother and a sister in a condescending way. That's my brother. That's my sister. If we are part of a body that's fitly joined together, I don't esteem this finger more than this finger. Because in order for it to be a hand, they have to work in conjunction with each other. So one is no more important than the other. What am I saying? So when I'm saying when you step outside of tradition, traditional religion, then you'll see that it's important. You had a fivefold ministry, but in order for the fivefold ministry to be effective, we have to function as a body. So we have these uh, positions of authority to operate in uh, that's conducive for organizational order, but those people that operate in those positions have to be mindful that they are positions to carry out the will of the Father. So it's just for the perfecting of the body. So if God used you in that capacity, then God, 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 bless God. But don't allow it to go to your head because he's using you in that capacity. Be mindful that that does not esteem you higher than the brother or sister next to you. Because when you when we create that atmosphere, that atmosphere of love, so then that means that the brother that or the sister that's holding the door don't feel minimized because they understand that we're working to carry out the will of the Father. We're working to operate to make the body effective and functional to carry out the will of the Father. 
So well, that's the difference. But then when you have somebody that want praise and want honor, then you have people under them that, that, that aspire to have the same thing. So now you got this little problem. You got this problem. And if you're not in that praise click, you're going to get clicked. <laughs> Just keeping it real. And when we act, everybody run around, act like they don't see it. They saw the brother Spoon uh, speak harshly to Sister Fork and then say nobody didn't say, you know, brother Spoon, that ain't right. But, but because they're a person of authority, it's acceptable. Well, you know, that's the so-and-so. That ain't right. It's not right. And God does not have no respect to person. We do. And we need to stop it. Stop it. Because it's not in the book. It's not in the book. We need to esteem. Not, the Bible said, give honor to whom honors do. So we honor them. So if you honor this person because of their position, then you'll get them double honor, but that means you honor everybody the same. So th this is this is port this is very important. Because when we do it God's way, guess what? He's responsible for the he's responsible for what goes on in the midst. What am I saying? He will show himself mighty. When we do it his way, he won't let nothing touch the ground. Because we're doing it his way. So that was we're not standing on our principles, we're not standing on the doctrine that we've established. We're not standing on things that we have orchestrated because of our ecclesiastical understanding. But we're understanding what God has said, and we're taking what he said, and we have planted it on the foundation that we're planted on. And we're standing on his word, and we're waiting for his word to manifest his will in our life because he said it is so. And now it's not we're not responsible for the outcome. He is because we're not doing what we want to do. We're doing what he wants us to do the way he wants us to do it. This is the difference. And when we do it that way, we'll see him move mighty in our midst. He's waiting on us. He's waiting. And so is the whole world. <laughs> They're waiting for the manifestations of the Son of God to take our place as a people. Praise God. As a people. We have authority to speak his word. But if we don't think we his son, praise God, then we speaking in a, from a place of coward. We're speaking from a place of fear. Listen, what you have has nothing to do with who God has made you to become. That's one thing that we need to dispel. Because you don't have a big house and a big, that don't mean nothing. If when you start to walk in his truth, God will manifest stuff to you. Stuff will be, you'll be tripping over stuff, people trying to give it to you. But our objective is to find ourselves to be planted solely into his will. That's, that's where we want to be. So that he'll be responsible. When you look at the life of Abraham, and I thought I was going to quit. I'm, I'm going to give it. I'm, see what I'm saying? I, I didn't even mean to turn that, made that right turn. And wow. Okay, I'm going to say this, and I am think I'm a to when you look at the life of Abraham, and you begin to study the life of Abraham, everywhere he went, he was blessed. He was blessed, and people blessed him. But he was always teaching people about his God. And he was, he, he, so he, they said his faith was accounted for right, but he was always, and the, in the scriptures it said, I remember when the Lord showed me that. He chose Abraham because he said it. That Abraham would teach the ways of God to his kids and his kids' kids. And he not only waited till he got kids, he was teaching them before he even had kids. He he taught always teaching about the ways of God. So this is important for us to realize and understand that we have to have that mindset. Jesus always said what his father said. What are we saying? Are we saying what somebody else told us, or are we saying what the word of God is saying? I'm just saying, <laughs> no pun intended, I'm just saying, <laughs> y'all better learn how to enjoy life, because I sure do, that's one of the good things about being a part of that kingdom, You, when you understand what he's done for us, you don't have, hey, we have hope beyond hope, praise God, we, hey, we are blessed, we are blessed and highly favored, don't look at what's in the cupboard, and don't look at what's in the bank account, just know that God will make a way, that's all we need to know. He always do and he always will. And the more we trust him, the more he'll manifest himself and show himself mighty. Praise God. We have to change how we see things. First of all, 
We need to see him the way we need to see him, and we need to see what he's done for us and where he has placed us and how he has made us his sons. We need to understand what that means. We need to understand, really understand what that means because that's the highest position that you can have down here. You know, you could be a bishop or what's in the, the apostle, and you could be apostle to the fifth power. But if you're not a son, it doesn't even matter. But if you're a son, you could be all of that. There's no higher position on this planet than being called a son. And we need to understand that all those other positions of authority is just to execute will. I mean, the will of the Father. But it's, it's not to be done in a way that this is the esteem one higher than the other. God love us with a love that I pray that he reveal it to us. I pray that he reveal. I remember he revealed to me the love he had for us. I, I, he showed me in a dream. But at the same time he was showing me that he was going to take both of my aunties a day or two apart. And in that dream, I was standing there and I saw the angels take them in the dream. And I was standing outside and I, the present, the love of God was so strong, I was just basking in it. And everybody was running outside looking at me like, what's going on? I said, don't y'all feel his love? Don't y'all feel it? He loved us with a love. And when we understand the love he had for us, we want to serve him. We want to serve him. The law calls people to want to serve him out of fear. But when you understand his love for us, you want to serve him because of the magnitude of love he had for us. Now, you still, you still, he is God. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> he is God. And I, I, hey, I respect God with, to the hundred power. I love him. <laughs> and I respect him. But I love him because of his love for me. And when I understood that, it just, uh, my goodness. You want to do his will. You want to know what he wants you to do. Because his love for us. I'm trying to hold back tears. Because he love us. <laughs> he love us. And a lot of times people go through this whole life and the enemy of how you looking at these little mundane things in your life. And that's not to minimize them. But you have to understand that if God, if you're connected to him and he allowed those things to come in your life, they weren't meant to destroy you. If you submit yourself to him, those things will draw you closer to him. And anything that will draw you closer to him you don't look at it as a bad thing. It might seem bad, but if it bring out a better end where it's making you closer to him, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. What better place to be? So with that being said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say anything else. As I was reading those scriptures, and that was the warning that he had gave to um, those leaders. And we have that same warning. We need to be a light. Wherever we go, we need to illuminate God's light. He has empowered us. To make a difference. And we have to be be mindful of that. I remember when I was going through this. I'm going to say this and shut up. I was going through this time in my life. When I was getting a lot of ridicule from people. Who I love. Uh, and I didn't understand it. I didn't have nobody to talk to. And I remember. Uh, I used to look in the mirror. And tell myself. Every day. That I'm the righteousness of God. This was, this was a long time ago. That, this was way back when. Uh, before um, the Lord took Bishop Smith, I used to look in the mirror and tell myself, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the lender and not the body. He's placed me above and not beneath. I'm blessed when I go. I'm blessed when I come. And the blessings of God exude from me. Um, I used to tell myself that. Now, this was in a time when a lot of times I didn't, I, I didn't know how the next bill was going to be paid. Uh, and we was living, we was, I was learning how to live by faith. And uh, the Lord took me through that process. And I thank him for that. Because I remember I tried to get these nice conventional jobs. And I, every time stuff would happen where it wouldn't allow it to happen. But God has a, he has a map, a road map for us to travel. And sometimes we don't understand it. But now that I look back in retrospect, I can honestly say in my heart, I wouldn't have it no other way. Now, I wasn't always able to say that. But I could say in my heart I wouldn't have it no other way because it was all those nooks and crannies and those turns and those those valleys and all that stuff. That's where I got to really know God. That's where I got to really know him. Uh, there's nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. Amen, Sister Crystal. I, that's so true. You know, so um, she said it. That said it all right there. So with that being said, that we have to trust this process. 
And with that, when she said Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, all I can say is remember Job. <laughs> Bam, that's it right there. <laughs> remember Job. That, that's it. So um, with all that being said, um, as I say uh, jokingly, I pray I was fed. <laughs> uh, it's almost time for Brother Will to go to bed. Um, as I uh, say in closing, I always say, um, good, well, let me pray first. I always get it mixed up. Yeah. Gracious Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank and praise you for your goodness and your great mercy. And we pray that you have your way in our midst, Lord. Allow your spirit to lead God and direct us. We pray, Lord, that you just, just have your way, Lord God. And we pray that you watch over and protect each and every one of us, Lord God. Open up our understanding, Lord God. Illuminate our hearts and our mind. That we, hallelujah, that we might walk in the fullness of who you made us to be, Lord God. That we might, Lord God, walk in the purpose in which you've called us, Lord, and created us, Lord God. In the fullness thereof, Lord, bringing glory and honor to your name. Lord, and we pray as we go forth, Lord God, that we'll be mindful of who you made us to be as, as your children, Lord God. And that we might walk in it, Lord God. Knowing with confidence, Lord God, that you hear us. And that you hear us, Lord God. And that you you hear us when we pray, Lord God. And that we, Lord God, as your sons, have the authority to speak your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Remember, good, better, best. Never let it rest till your good is better and your better is best. Maximizing the potential that is within us. Maximizing the kingdom of God. We have to be mindful that that's our purpose. That we're to maximize his kingdom. We're supposed to go forth and illuminate that light that was in us and cause the world to, to turn their hearts and mind to him because of what's inside of us. Because we, we are an extension of his love. The only love of, of God that they're going to see is the love that is in us. And we need to allow that love to be manifested. You know, we're an extension of his hand. So when Jesus said, you've seen me, you've seen the Father, that should be something that each and one, every one of us is striving to be able to say. That we are manifesting the fullness of the Father in the life that we live. That we've completely sold out to him. So that we could say, like Jesus said, when the enemy came, he can, it's nothing in me. He, he found nothing. It's nothing in me. It was nothing in Jesus that could be, cause him to turn to the enemy. He was solely sold out to God. And we can do the same thing. Amen. He was our example. So with that being said, let's move to it. Godspeed. God bless everyone. I pray to everyone. Love you, Sister Crystal. Good to see, uh, hear you. I love your comments. Um, then Sister Daisy, all y'all, I really thank you and praise you for keep me in your prayers. And I do the same. Uh, God bless you all and good night. And to those I haven't seen, because I, I want to get, um, okay, Sister Daisy, okay. Praise God, Sister Daisy. So I, I thank God for each and every one. And I pray that y'all just continue to keep me in your prayers. And uh, I'll do the same. Amen. God bless. Good night.